Grab me a cup of coffee and today we are going to be talking about the movies as literature curriculum but how we turn it into children's movies as literature for eighth grade. Hey everyone, I know we're talking a lot right now about this, the movies as literature curriculum, but this is kind of the group of subjects that we're covering right now. We're eventually going to move on to science but there's a reason why I'm having to wait on that. But right now, again, so we've made a video about just talking about the overview of this book and how we started using it to teach two dyslexic readers and two advanced placement students in our homeschooling. That's four different kids, by the way. Um, but we started using this two years ago and we have fallen in love with the method of using movies as literature to teach your children. They are not a sponsor of any of our videos. It's just this method has become eye-opening for us of being able to teach the way that we always really wanted to teach our kids anyways. So yeah, the other video will have like why we're using it, how we're using it, and then there's a separate video for advanced placement. And I'll try to put all of them in the list as we go. Last week we also talked about how we used it to do British movies as literature. Now if you know the movies as literature book only covers a specific set of 17 movies that you can choose from. We don't use all of them um, that you can choose from. We use that book mostly just for ninth grade, but we technically start movies as literature with eighth grade. Now I know that seems a little bit backwards, but let me explain. I'll talk about a little bit more in another video a couple weeks ago about how we choose what we do for each grade level and how you can take it and adapt movies as literature to work for your family. Um, but eighth grade, we choose to do children's movies as literature because number one, it opens up the kids' eyes to like, oh, hey, I really love this movie. Wait, there's a book based off of it. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about comparing and contrasting books. And that's something like high school students can do. There's movie review classes that you can do, um, movie critic classes. Um, a lot of the literature classes, even like in public schools, they watch them, they read the story. They spend a lot of time on one of Shakespeare's plays and then watch a movie loosely based off of it. So like this is a concept that's not anything new. It's just when you have a homeschool kid that's been raised in homeschool their entire lives, they know what nouns, adjectives, adverbs are leading up to eighth grade. So then when they get to eighth grade, middle school in my opinion, this is my personal opinion, is mostly just a quick review before you go to high school because everything you learn in high school, you've already learned in middle school. That's just kind of my opinion. So then when you take a kid who's so sick of learning about nouns every single year and adjectives every single year, yes, they get this. Movies as literature then focuses more on the writing perspective. You're taking a movie that you love or that maybe is new to you that's loosely based off a book or really, really based off a book in some cases. Then you're watching the movie, reading the book, and then you're taking all that information and putting it into a document format, which is also a life skill that I feel like is lacking with some adults nowadays that some people need to learn to be able to do. So I love this whole format of being able to do this. Children's movies is literature. It kind of takes them from that, okay, we're doing workbooks and we're filling in these nouns and adjective adverbs, and now we're getting them ready for their fixing to start high school the next year, and they need to know how to make these Word documents and be able to make what their thoughts are, take the thoughts from here and put them either on pen and paper or into um, your Google worksheets or Google uh, sheet, yeah, Google Sheets, Google, you know, all the docs. There we go, Google Docs on your computer. And be able to take all that and program and plug it in and being able to send all that to submit in the email format and all that. Life skills that I feel like my kids need to know. So that's why we do children's movies as literature. And then the movies as literature is kind of like that, okay, hey, we're starting ninth grade and now our brains are kind of like, ah, freak out mode because we're starting high school. And movies as literature kind of takes all that back in and says, relax, you've got this, you know how to do this, let's start, let's have a quick reminder of basics and then we'll go on forward. So again, like I've talked about a lot of that in another video, but that's just kind of like a quick recap of that for those of you who may have missed some of those. Definitely please, if you were super interested in movies as literature curriculum, how we're using it for five grades for all of our kids, definitely go back and check the whole playlist of movies that we've made on this. Today though, I wanna focus on children's movies literature. There's two different children who are doing it or did do it. Last year, my now ninth grader did children's movies as literature for her literature for eighth grade. Now before that, she had done sixth and seventh grade, Monarch, and then K through K five through fifth grade, Abeka. And she had had a lot of review in Abeka of like nouns, adjectives, adverbs. Then when she did Monarch, it was basically the same concept, but it was in a digital format that automatically graded for you. But they started adding in like 
a different book every couple of months that you read and then you do a report on it and she leaned more towards liking that aspect anyway so that was how she transitioned easily into movies as literature i always tell people if this way of teaching hadn't opened up we probably would still stick with wall art because i love the way that they format everything but this way opened up to us and it what became available to us so now we're doing this but monarch was kind of that stepping stone to get to that point so i talked about this a little bit last last week in the british movies this literature book and i'm filming all these in one day so that's why the outfit's not going to change um i have one day to film like five videos and <laughs> because the school year is a little bit different anyways so last year things went were a little rocky for a little bit with some of our um homeschooling because like we ended up doing a lot more travel schooling than we were planning on so my eighth grader did less children's movies as literature uh, movies than we actually had initially planned on and did more like freelance writing also because of the way that her science was designed last year she did a whole lot more science work and doing reports for science so what i did was instead of making her watch additional movies and doing movies as literature I allowed her to take her science and turn it in for science and literature if she allowed me to uh, send her editing prompts through Google she or Google Docs and uh, be able to correct it that way. And so that so like that's another way you can do it is like if you just don't have time to do a movie every two weeks like it's it's designed to do, then um, or like for some people you need one a month, whatever you need to do, as long as you're doing the literature work. Um, so for her we kind of dueled it together well this year my current eighth grader is kind of doing the same thing but i'll explain that in a minute so last year the movies that my eighth grader did that my ninth grader is not doing this year for a reason i'll explain in a minute was matilda so matilda was kind of a fun one they had seen that one before and then that was a road doll book that they did which means since she did matilda for eighth grade she is not doing matilda for 10th grade for british movies this literature so you kind of see how that works and i keep docs and sheet no i keep sheets Google Sheets of like every movie they've watched, what grade they made, because we do not repeat movies as they go. If they watched it with a younger sibling before and then they never did the report on it, that's different. Like, because we all we watch all the movies together. But we're not going to like have her do Matilda for, for eighth grade last year and then again for 10th grade next year. That's not how it works. So, yeah, so the so she's already watched that one and she watched Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with them last year. She's going to get to do Charlie and Chocolate Factory for 10th grade, but she didn't do a report on it. So I, I hope that kind of clarifies that. So she did Matilda. Then she did Madeline, the live action one. A Little Princess, which is free on YouTube. Uh, Sage Paints the Sky, which is an American Girl movie. Ella Enchanted. Mary Poppins. Jumanji. And then she did the free writing for science. So the only, uh, as you saw, like a lot of those are books that were written like for children doesn't matter the genre, doesn't matter where the writer is from, which is kind of the fun freedom of the children's movies of literature. You don't have to base it on like only America, only Britain, only, you know, outside of American or British writers like that. It's just meant to be a place. Sorry, I'm changing my sheets over. It's just meant to be like fun children's books that she likes that she wanted to watch the movie on and then do a report on and then like i said in the spring when she had a lot of her science documents that she needed to do i just took science and english and combined them as one uh class and in tennessee you were allowed to do that so on the flip side my now eighth grader is doing children's movies as literature but she is doing american history this year i will go into it in a whole other video but we are using american girl to teach uh american history so honestly the first thing that i did was i went into a google sheet and i will include that right here i went into a google sheet and i plugged in the the dates every other week because the way that we do movies as literature i suggest in the movies as literature book is you change your movie every other week and that gives them two weeks to be able to do the reports and turn that in before they start the next movie and doing their other work. So a little bit of a spoiler for the American history. Basically what we're doing is for my eight, my advanced placement eighth grade student, um, she is not doing any written work for history. All of the written work for history will be under the children's movies as literature program. And then the history, she'll be doing additional research and doing the American Girl curriculum that we've pieced together for her and doing more reading with that. Technically, it's, it's basically the two classes have merged as one. And again, the Umbrella School is cool with that because sometimes like one of the things that frustrated me about Abeka would be like 
you would have two pages of science uh, questions that you had to answer and then two more pages of history work that required reading and outside sources and then like multiple pages of essays to have to write and I didn't like that I didn't like have every single class had additional work and additional work and additional work I don't like seat work I don't like busy work so I am perfectly fine merging classes together and doing work and I don't think that a child has to show written work to prove that they've learned something if they can actually visibly show you that they've learned something from from it. So that's kind of where we are in our mindset of it. So this year's eighth grade moves literature is going to be combined with that American girl, you are American history class. It's not the same as US history. We'll get to that in a different video, but I do have two taking US history at the same time. So you're going to see some of these repeated with the 11th graders list. I will get to that when I get to the American movies as literature later on. So the current list that she has, and again, you're going to see that it's going to have dates and it's going to change over the week. And that's again, how we do it. It gives her two weeks to do her three to five paragraph report and read any Cohen, any books that go along with that. So number one, we're starting with Squanto. There's a Disney plus movie about Squanto loosely based off of Squanto. There's some inaccuracies there, but it has some characters from like other movies that we like, like Haunted Man, the original Haunted Mansion. Um, it also has one of the characters from the Princess Bride and it's, he has a really funny role in that and it's so funny. Um, so that's like a really good one to watch with that. We, we actually have already watched that one and we really enjoyed it. So the next one down is Felicity. Um, I'll kind of slide this over real quick to show you. I also didn't show this on the other one. I have a source list and on the source list, it tells me, do I need to have a DVD for this? Do, is it on Disney Plus? Is it on Amazon Prime? There's several American Girl movies on Amazon Prime. The reason why I also do that is if we're planning a travel trip, during that week, I know I can grab the DVD for that child. If not, I may get a DVD for another child or bring some additional work that we have set aside just for travel schooling that will also still coincide with what they're learning in their current classes. If you need additional help on how to do this and you haven't read the Movies as Literature book yet and you want to wait till ninth grade like we did, Misty Least has a movie review thing where you watch movies based on books or just movies and then you do like a movie summary later. You can use those worksheets for these movies and it will work wonderfully. It worked with us uh, last year with one of my kids. So Felicity was the next one. So then when I went from there, you see a couple that are not American Girl. Basically what I did was I Googled the dates of the next doll that they were going to cover. And we'll get to that again later with American History, how we chose specific dolls and whatnot for each time frame. The next one on there was War of 1812. According to the Disney website, Frozen was written loosely around the time of the War of 1812, which means that their clothing would be more inspired of around that time frame, even though they're Scandinavian, but they're royalty Scandinavian. So that's kind of like the reason why we chose Frozen. And Canto, the entire reason we chose that is because the next uh, doll on there was Josefina. And Encanto is the one movie we've seen from Disney that we've been extremely impressed with. They did a, an immense amount of study with Lynn manuel Miranda talking about the uh, Colombian culture. So that's why we chose Encanto. Princess and the Frog. When Princess and the Frog first came out, I did not let my kids watch it because it has a heavy amount of voodoo in it. And I'm still, I'm not 100% comfortable with it, but I also feel like my kids are older now, so it's okay to have those uncomfortable topics sometimes of like why we do and don't believe what we do, what why they believe the way that they do. So that's kind of why we decided to go ahead and put that one in for while we're studying two discontinued dolls who lived in Baton Rouge, or around Baton Rouge, New Orleans area during that time frame. Home on the Range is to cover the uh, colonial expansion, like settlements, um, Wild West, the color of friendship is not technically in order. What we did was I could not find a movie that in my personal opinion, again, everything I say, my personal opinion, this is me, my personal opinion, where I am with my kids and my husband and I seriously have sit down conversations of like, what do we do? What do we don't do? Like we had to sit down conversation of we were not comfortable with our kids watching horror films to do schoolwork, which is why we pulled all the horror films from the movies as literature book. I cannot find a movie that in my personal opinion, is a middle school level maturity level about civil war. I could not find it. But I remember watching with my grandmother and my grandmother was raised in East Tennessee during the civil rights movement. And there were parts of East Tennessee that were not like the rest of the South during the civil rights movement. There were many African Americans who moved to the Smoky Mountains area because it, and there were some places in the Smoke Mountains where it was like a safe place for them to work. 
um, and they would work, you know, in on the farms here. And my grandmother tells me the story of my great grandfather hired an African American to help him one year during a uh, growing season. And so, like, I sat down with my grandmother and watched this movie, The Color of Friendship, when it came out on Disney years ago in the 90s. So I remember liking it. I may I don't remember every aspect of it, but the basis of the color of friendship is is a African American family here in the US is accepting a foreign exchange student from South Africa. Those of you that don't know your history, South Africa was settled by British uh, colonials. So a lot of people in South Africa are white and have British accents. So they're thinking they're gonna get this black with this African American or they're they're gonna get this darker skin colored foreign exchange student and she arrives and she's light colored british looking foreign exchange student so that's the movie i chose for that and it's because of that perspective because it covers both sides so it's like it's a, it's a really difficult topic to cover but i still felt that it was a little more appropriate than any civil war movie that i could find so that is why i specifically chose that again i am not saying any debate either way on those issues I'm just saying that that's the movie that I chose to cover that topic with my kids. Um, the next one on here is Samantha, and that's also a DVD. We just bought the four pack, the one that has uh, Felicity, Samantha, Molly, and Kit on it because it was cheaper by the four pack. So Samantha's on there, which is also really cool because I feel like Samantha had more Christmas, like they all four of them have Christmas, but Samantha I felt like had more Christmas in it. So it's really cool that that's going to hit right before Christmas. Then again, Christmas. So instead of doing another just random Christmas movie, we chose the modern American girl movie that we have, Isabel. Um, Isabel dances the spotlight. Is she's uh, trying to dance in the Nutcracker. So that one was like still American girl. Isabel also still covers like some cultural things in there as well, and about like um, siblings and getting along and just I love I love that Isabel movie. So then again, I went back to for the, the after Christmas list. I went back to that list at Disney and there's a, I don't remember what website it is. It's not Disney's website. There's a website that has like Disney movies based on time frame, And the one that was Roaring Twenties listed was Treasure Planet and Atlantis. We chose Atlantis because we've already seen Atlantis. I want to kind of preview Treasure Planet before I let them see it because I've never seen it. There's some movies I will preview before my kids watch them. The next one on here is Kit, which covers the Great Depression. Moana and Molly, if you look, are one week apart. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a two week study of World War II. We're gonna do Moana first for the, I just forgot the doll's name, my daughter has it, but it's the Hawaiian based doll pre-Pearl, I think her story starts pre-Pearl Harbor and then goes to after Pearl Harbor, I think. I Don't hold me to that. But there's a doll that's based in Hawaii pre-Pearl Harbor, like right before Pearl Harbor. Um, so I wanted to cover Moana because I, again, I think Disney has done better in the past years of doing better of showing actual authentic culture from some of these area, like the Southeast Asian Island Pacific areas. Um, so we're going to do Moana and then the next week we're going to do Molly, but it's still all one topic, World War II and talking about like Hawaiian culture and the U.S. culture and culture in the U.S. during World War II and things like that. And then the next one on there is Mary Ellen, which is the space race. Melody covers the civil rights movement. Ivy and Julie is basically the uh, flower child generation. Um, and then Oliver and Company was the one listed for the 1980s. So like Cold War, um, post-Cold War. Lilo and Stitch covers the 2000s. Bolt also covers 2000s and Wreck-It Ralph covers more of like the newer generation tech internet and all that we may we talked about we may if we have time we're going to do wreck it ralph and ralph Rex the internet um breaks or wrecks i can't remember which one it is one of those two the two wreck it ralph movies um and that's kind of the list that we have for our current eighth grade student if we don't get to some of these and we're traveling and we can't watch them when we don't have access to disney plus like we talked about before we have a jar of free writing prompts and before we travel she grabs one slip out of there and then she does a one page report on that free writing prompt it may have like three keywords like a key a box and a necklace or it may be like um share your favorite uh vacation memory um or uh if you could move into a castle made of marshmallows what would you do stuff like that just like something that kind of gets them out of their comfort zone but also makes them think and does something a little more creative so that is where we are with our children's movies this literature 
like I said, I kind of wanted to show you both perspectives of one was not 100% based off of American Girl and was based off of movies that she liked, but also like in the spring semester, while we had a bunch of movies scheduled for her, we, it didn't work out to do those because she really wanted to do this freelance science report that she was doing based on a bird's nest that was being built outside of our living room window and watching them progress as they went. Like she didn't touch it, we watched it from the living room window. Um, and then also like she wanted to do some plant studies and things. So that was kind of like where we were. And we went with it with, went with it as we uh, went along through our homeschooling journey last year. So this is kind of where we are. And again, like I'm probably gonna lean more towards trying to stick close to this plan for the current eighth grader because it does tie in with her history. But if it doesn't work out that way and we get some opportunities to go travel to some places, then of course I'm gonna change it up. And in what another thing that I do is when we're traveling, they're required to carry travel journals and they're required to write down each day at the end of the day, something that they learned from that experience or something that they saw that they didn't know about before. So that's kind of where we are. But that's it for our uh, plan of action for children's movies as literature for our eighth grade student. Next week, my plan of action is to do American movies as literature. It's slightly different. Some of the movies are going to be the same, but we're going to be covering a little bit of a different topic with some of those. And I'm really looking forward to like watching my American history and my two U.S. history students kind of like collaborate a little bit and work together. They'll, they all do separate reports, but it is kind of fun to like watch them learn something together. And then on the flip side, my ninth grader who does not have any history classes this year because she's doing an emphasis on science and her Japanese course. Um, and it's just kind of like I'll allow her to have some feedback in there as well from a, like an outside perspective. So it's kind of cool to watch all that collaborate together. But that is it for this video. Thank you to all of our members for supporting this content. If you are in, if you already are one of our members and you're interested in like you want me to make you a PDF of that, of like our full list of that, of the class, of the movies that we're doing, other additional books that we're tying in with each of those, our plan of action of how that works for a year. Let me know. I can make you a PDF of that for our members level of 99 cents and above that you usually get our grocery plan list and all that for the uh, week, each week. But even if you can't, I put the whole list on here for free just for you to have as a springboard because I understand that like right now it's kind of rough for some people and you're trying to find a way to homeschool without like breaking the bank and that's why I felt like I wanted to go ahead and share this for you. But that is it you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for positive comments, liking, and subscribing and we will see you next time.